Hey there, in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with Google Analytics. We're going to walk through all of the steps you need to follow so that you can begin reporting on the performance of your website. You'll learn how to use your reports and about the different configuration options. I'll also include extra tips along the way. And if you're already using Google Analytics, then I've included links in the description below this video so you can jump to a topic that you're interested in. Okay, let's start by creating our Google Analytics account. We're on the Google Marketing Platform website and we can see under four small businesses, we have the analytics section. Uh, then on the right hand side on the top, we can see we have two options. If you already have a Google Analytics account, then you can sign in. So you can click sign into analytics to access your existing Google Analytics account. Or if you're just getting started for the first time, then we can select the start for free button to sign up for Google Analytics. Now for the login that I'm using for my Gmail or my Google for Workplace email address that I'm using, I already have access to a Google Analytics account. So the steps that you see might be a little bit different, but they're still the same components. So the first thing that we need to do when we create a new Google Analytics account is we need to name our account. Now, the best thing to think about for an account is it's really that sort of top level folder structure for keeping everything uh, neat and tidy inside Google Analytics. So typically what you'll want to do here is name your account after your business or your organization. So let's go ahead and name the account. And then what we can see is below the account name, we have some different data sharing options. So you want to review these and make sure you're comfortable, but basically this gives uh, Google access to some components of your data. Typically it's anonymous data from Google analytics. For example, we can see here by default, we're opted into benchmarking and we can see it's not sharing our individual data with others. It's anonymous data. Uh, also, if you do, have the need for technical support in the future, then making sure you have that technical support option enabled. And also if you want someone from Google to get in touch with you about your account, potentially they can do that if you do have the option enabled there. Okay, then what we can do is once we're happy, we can click on next. And the next step after our account, that top level folder is our property. So our property is really how we're gonna start collecting data into our reports. By default here, I just want to highlight, we're looking at a Google Analytics 4 property. So Google Analytics 4 is the latest version of Google Analytics. And there's two different sort of types of analytics properties that you may encounter. One is Google Analytics 4, which is the new type of property. And the other is called Universal Analytics, which is the previous version of Google Analytics. If you're interested in uh, one or the other, then feel free to use the links uh, in the description below this video to jump to particular topics relating to either Google Analytics 4, also called GA4 or Universal Analytics. So what we're gonna do is for this um, particular setup, we're gonna follow the defaults. And then what we'll do is we'll also create a Universal Analytics property. So I wanna show you both types of properties in this tutorial so that you can really make an informed decision about which type is going to work for you and your business. So the property name is really going to be the name of your particular website. So in this particular case, I'm just going to call it the same as uh, the account, but I'm going to put in website. And then we can see the next step here that we need to do is we need to select our reporting time zone. Just take a little bit of extra care at this stage, because if you do change the reporting time zone later on, then you'll either see a gap in content or potentially potentially there'll be a little bit of overlap as well. So I'm based in Sydney, so I'm gonna click Australia and then Sydney, and then you can select the particular currency that you want for your reporting as well. I'm gonna leave mine on US dollars. We can also see there's some advanced options, and I'd actually encourage you to do this. So if you are getting started for the very first time, then I think it's still a good idea to create a universal analytics property. And I'll explain this in a moment when we jump into the reports in more detail. So I'm just gonna enable that on the right hand side. And we can see here what we need to do now is we need to put in our domain name. So we're just gonna put in the URL for our website. And we can see I've got the option selected here that says create both a Google Analytics 4 and a Universal Analytics property. And then the other thing that I'm going to leave is the default here, which is called enhanced measurement. We'll come back to this when we jump into Google Analytics 4 properties in more detail, but basically enhanced measurement will automatically track a range of important actions taking place on your website. So this will include things like people scrolling, people clicking outbound links, downloading files, even watching embedded YouTube videos on your website. So I'm gonna leave that option enabled and now I'm gonna click on next. 
So now this is optional. This is just putting in some details to help sort of, I suppose, help give the Google Analytics team some insights about the types of people using, using Google Analytics. So you can select your particular industry category from the list. Uh, so you can also change this after the fact. I'm just going to go with business. You can select the, type, the size of your business from the selector and you can also see, you know, enter details about how you might want to use Google Analytics. I'm just going to leave those ones. I'm just going to click on create. We then need to agree uh, to the terms of service uh, for our particular country. So I'm going to select Australia, agree, and I accept. And now what it's going to do is it's going to create our brand new uh, property. So just importantly here, I'm just going to close this for a second here. And I just wanted to show you Basically, we now have on the left hand side here, this left column is our account. So this is the brand new, that top level folder we created inside Google Analytics. We can see it's named Love Starter, which is the name I entered. When, when you're following along, that will of course be uh, the name of your business or organization. So that's our top level folder. And then on the right hand side here, we can see our property. And this is really a property is designed to track you know, a particular sort of entity of our business. So for example, we can see I have my website tracked here. Now I just want to highlight again, uh, we've sort of touched on the idea that there's two different types of properties. There's Google Analytics 4 and there's Universal Analytics. And we can see here that as we've created our property, Google Analytics has named it dash GA4. So we know this is the newer Google Analytics 4 property type. Because I selected that option during setup to create both types of properties, we can actually see we have both here. We've got UA dash and then an ID. That's our universal analytics property. And then we have our Google Analytics 4 property, the newer type of property. So from there, what we actually have then is our data stream. And this was actually the window I just uh, briefly closed there. Our data stream is super important for Google Analytics 4 properties. This is basically our going to be our tracking tag or our tracking code that we're going to add onto our website. So importantly on the top we have our measurement ID. That's our unique identifier for our data stream. So when we place that on our website Basically, when data flows in, Google Analytics will know, hey, that's for this particular property and it's going to put it in the right spot uh, for our reports as data is flowing in uh, from our website. We can also see that enhanced measurement option uh, that we touched on. So it's automatically going to track things like scrolls and outbound clicks and uh, file downloads and embedded YouTube videos on our website. And Below this, uh, we can see we have the tagging instructions. So this is basically how we're going to add this tag in order to start collecting information into our reports. We can see there's two different options here. There's uh, the global site tag or gtag.js. This is where we place the dedicated tag on our site. And we also have the option of Google Tag Manager. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look at the different reports available inside Google Analytics 4 as well as Universal Analytics. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll talk more about how we can actually add the tag to our website using either the global site tag or Google Tag Manager to streamline the management of Google Analytics as well as any other tags that we have running on our website. So now what we're gonna do is I wanted to sort of look at the reports first so you could get a feel for the different versions of properties. As I mentioned, we have Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics. So this one is, this is actually the Google demo account. Um, so you can actually, if you're interested in accessing the demo account, I've included a link in the description below this video. But basically the demo account is a great place to sort of play and experiment with the different Google Analytics reports. And we can see here that the name of the report is UA dash uh, for our property. So this is a universal analytics property. And we can see here on this selector on the top, we can click this to quickly switch between the different accounts we might have access to and the different properties. So here we can see in the demo account uh, that Google Analytics provides, we've got a number of different properties. We've got two different Google Analytics four properties, and we also have a universal analytics property. So we're going to start by looking at the Universal Analytics property and we'll look at some of the important reports to give you a feel for Universal Analytics and how you can actually use this and apply the reports to improve the performance of your website and also your marketing. So first off on the left, we have our main menu inside Universal Analytics and we can see we're on the home uh, report at the moment. The home report 
is it's dynamic. So it's always updating. We can see, for example, on the right, we actually have the current number of users on the Google merchandise store, which is what's uh, sending data into this demo account and property. So we've got live uh, details about who's on our website right now. And then we also have this sort of trend. So we can see here for the particular demo site, it is a store. So we can see details about the revenue. Um, we can see revenues decreased for this particular last 30 day period in comparison to the 30 days before this. So this is like a quick sort of health check, I suppose, for your website. So you can, you can interact with this, of course, you can see as we hover over, we can see the different trends for particular days. You can select on revenue if you wanted to see, you know, how that revenue is performing and so on. As we scroll down, we then get some more top level insights. So we can see here details about how people are actually finding our website. So we can see by the majority for the Google store are coming in directly. So they're coming directly into the website. When we can also see there's some paid search, affiliate traffic, organic search, and so on. So this just gives us a sort of top level summary. And to be honest, I don't spend a whole lot of time here. Probably the main thing to keep an eye out when you're in uh, the home report inside Universal Analytics is on the right here. So this is actually providing automated insights from the data that's being collected using Google's machine learning. So you can see, um, you can click on more and this will give you a whole range of automated insights. And the nice thing about this section is that analytics intelligence is all based specifically to your business and your website. So they're going to be very custom um, to what to your audience and your website. So definitely have a look at those. It's also a really great place if you feel a bit lost, like if you're not sure, oh, you know, what report should I look at today? You can always head into analytics intelligence on the home uh, report to take a look. So then as you scroll down, there's more sort of top level details like where people are geographically located, the time of day and, and day of week people are coming in, the different devices people are using. So we can see the majority of people on the Google store coming in on desktop. We can also see like a top snapshot of the pages people are viewing on our website. So that's really the home report, uh, good for that sort of snapshot. But then probably what you'll want to do is you'll want to dig into the standard reports, which are on the left here under, under reports. So first off, we have the real time reports. This gives you additional detail about who's currently on your website. So this is uh, really useful, for example, if you are sending out like a, an email campaign, uh, you can then see as people are coming into your website, you can see where they're landing. And you'll see in a moment down on the right here, as people come into particular pages, they'll be highlighted in green. And as people leave particular pages, they'll be highlighted in red. So you'll actually see as people are coming in and as people are leaving uh, the web, leaving your website, you'll actually see that flagged. So this is the overview report. So again, it's giving us that sort of top level snapshot. But then what we can do is on the left, we can see we can actually head into the specific uh, real time reports. And there we just saw someone entering that page and leaving the home page. So we can see there's location. So if you wanted to see the geographic location of where people are located, probably the ones that I use the most really content. So this is for that email campaign example, you can see where people are landing on your website. It's also actually super useful if you need to troubleshoot uh, your tracking inside Universal Analytics. So you can like head to the page, make sure the page is being tracked. And then once you see it in the real time report, you know that that data is being collected appropriately. We can see there's some other ones. Let's skip down now. Let's move out of the real time and probably where you're going to spend the majority of your time in your Universal Analytics property are under audience acquisition behavior and conversions on the left here. So let's take a look at the audience overview report. So this report really gives you sort of a top level summary about um, who is visiting your website. So we can see at the top here, we have this timeline, this trend. So we can see particular uh, spikes, like maybe we sent out that email on, you know, on that particular day, or maybe a new campaign launched, or maybe there's just a growth in interest in your website. So more people coming through. So you're going to see those sort of changes as people come in to your website. Now, below this, we can see some top level metrics. So metrics inside Google Analytics, generally like numbers or percentages or ratios, they basically give us those top level details. So we can see, for example, the number of users, the number of people who are coming in to the Google merchandise store in this particular case. In your, in your reports, this will be the number of people accessing your website. 
So we can see how many people are coming in. We can see sessions. So how many times they're engaging on our website. And then we can see some top level engagement metrics. So we can see on average, people are coming in for 1.27 um, sessions per user. So they're not coming back an awful lot. They're coming primarily in once um, into the website. We can also see the bounce rate. So this is sort of the stickiness, like are people staying or are they quickly leaving? So a bounce inside Google Analytics, inside Universal Analytics, is uh, basically when someone comes in, views a single page, and then immediately leaves your website. Um, so the bounce rate is the percentage of people who are just viewing that single page on your site before leaving. Okay, so we can see on the overview page, we do have this general sort of snapshot. We've got top 10, so we can see the top 10 languages people have set for the browser they're using to access your site. We can see things like the top 10 countries, so the geographic location, and we can see some details about the different devices they're using. What I wanted to just quickly show you before we move into some of the other reports is probably one of the first ways you'll begin actually engaging with Google Analytics and manipulating what you're seeing, and that's using the date range selector on the top right corner. So we can see here we have this default date range and that will be rolling. So in other words, each time you come in, that will, that will reflect the sort of the current recent history, but we can actually modify that. So maybe I'm interested to see, oh, how did we go, you know, at the end of last year? How did we go in uh, November and December? So I can select a start date, an end date, click apply, and then our report will update to show us the trends and the metrics for that particular date range. So it's probably going to be the first way you start really engaging and modifying what you're seeing inside Google Analytics is using that date range. You can also just select on a particular month. And as I said, a custom one is where you clicked a start and an end date for a custom date range inside Google Analytics. Okay, so that's the overview report and probably from there you'll want to jump into some of the more detailed reports available inside Universal Analytics. There's a whole range of reports. I'm not going to go through every single report. I'm just going to pick out a few. So probably key ones that are available automatically for all of us will be things like the location. So the geographic location of our audience. This can be useful if you're looking for opportunities to maybe identify new markets for your products or services. So you can see, you know, where people are geographically located. You can see important things like in this particular example, being an e-commerce store, we can see where sales and revenue are coming from already. And so what we might do is start to look for opportunities where, you know, maybe where, you know, we're not getting a whole lot of traffic from Canada, for example. So maybe you know, and the e-commerce conversion rate is low. So maybe here's an opportunity to make sure that we have you know, well-priced shipping to get products uh, to Canada. So then maybe we could advertise more and get, you know, more people coming in, more revenue and more transactions and so on. So we've got the geographic location report is super useful. The other one I like is just the mobile overview report. So this just gives you a very top level summary of whether people are on mobile devices or not on mobile devices. So here we can see we've got desktop, mobile and tablet. And one thing that we can do is again, as we start to sort of customize things in Google Analytics is we can select on one of those rows. So just selecting the checkbox and then we can click on plot rows. And what this will do is our graph will update. And now we can see any trends uh, in that top uh, graph uh, coming up there as well. So we can actually map them out if we like, we could even do all of them, map them out into our, into our trend line there to see them at the top. And so we can see the different devices people are using. You can drill down further, of course, so that that is very top level. So you can drill down, you can see the actual individual devices people are using to access your website as well. Now, there are some other reports in here. We are just going to keep moving now. So we're going to go into the acquisition reports, but I do encourage you to explore um, the other reports. There are some that will require setup. For example, the demographics report and the interest report do require um, some setup and we can touch on that briefly a little bit later when we look at configuration. So the next set of reports is acquisition. This is a super important set of reports because this is all about how people are finding your website. So here on the overview, we've got this again, the overview report being a top level snapshot of in this case, how people are finding our website. So we can see the majority of people for the Google store coming in directly. So maybe they already know the URL or maybe they bookmarked it or maybe they're clicking on a untagged link in an email and coming straight through to the website. Basically direct means they're coming directly. There's no other known source or medium combination to get them through to the website. 
We can then see we've got a percentage of paid traffic. We have affiliates, display traffic, referrals, and so on. So we can actually see all those different methods and down here we can see that graphed out. Now personally, the one I like inside Universal Analytics is my favorite one, which is Source and Medium. So the Source and Medium report provides this sort of really quite granular view about how people are finding your website. So here we can see on the left we have Source and then Medium. So Source is where the message is seen and Medium is how the message is communicated. So we can see, for example, row number two here, the message was seen on Google, and it came from CPC, so cost per click. So it's from our Google Ads campaigns. So we can see this full list of exactly how people are finding our site. We can see the number of users, the number of sessions as we've talked about, the bounce rate, and we can even see if we have e-commerce or goals configured, we can see how we're performing after they actually come through to our website. Are they converting? Are they completing those important actions that we've configured and defined for Google Analytics? So Source and Medium is one of my picks. Channels is uh, a bit like the overview report. It's just a top level summary um, of how people are finding our site. You can click through on these. So for example, if you wanted to see under referrals, the different individual websites linking to your website, you can click on referrals in your Google Analytics and you'll see all the different uh, domains um, that are linking through to yours. Also under acquisition, we have Google Ads. So super important, of course, if you are running Google Ads campaigns, you can see that sort of campaign structure from Google Ads. So you'll see the campaigns, the ad groups, um, the keywords that you're bidding on, all those sorts of things. You can see there's a whole bunch of reports there. You can spend time traveling through, especially if you are going to be running Google Ads campaigns. Absolutely worth linking Google Analytics to Google Ads. And if you need help with that linking, then check out the extra resources below. I'll include a link. So on how to actually link uh, Google Ads to Google Analytics. The other one that's super important to link, and I'll include a link to extra resources as well, is Google Search Console. So Google Search Console is an entirely separate product. Basically, it allows you to understand how your website's performing in Google organic search results. So once you've linked it up, um, let's have a look. I can't remember if the demo stores linked this correctly. They might have. Yes, they have, great. And there's a time when they didn't actually have it linked correctly. But under Search Console, we can see queries. So these are the actual things people are typing in on Google to then come in and find our website. So absolutely worth linking that up. If you do click on Search Console and you're just getting started for this first time, there will be a message telling you you do actually need to link uh, Google Search Console to Google Analytics. Um, we're gonna skip, maybe we won't, just very quickly, social. Basically, this collects all the details about how people are coming in from social networks. So probably my top pick here is network referrals under the social reports. This just gives you a clean, readable list of all the different social networks driving traffic um, through to your website. So it's under social. Campaigns, basically under the campaigns report, this will include by default any Google AdWords campaigns that you already have if you've linked your Google AdWords account and you are running campaigns. So here we can see, you might not remember this, but from the Google Ads reports, we did see some of these names like one, three, five, all of these ones uh, were Google Ads uh, campaigns. So it will include Google Ads by default, but here we can see two, it'll actually also include any custom campaigns that you're tracking into Google Analytics as well. And this can be achieved with campaign tagged URLs on any inbound links um, that you're using to send traffic to your website. So that's under campaigns. You can then see there's a bit of a breakdown. So for example, if you are running Google ads, you'll see the paid keywords broken out. You'll also find this of course, under the Google ads reports too. Organic keywords, not so useful anymore because uh, you know it's been quite a few years now, but basically Google doesn't provide the individual keywords through to any analytics tool, whether it's Google analytics or anything else. So we see a whole bunch of not provided, so not very useful. So that's really a quick sort of snapshot of the acquisition reports. Next up is behavior. Um, this is probably another one where you're gonna spend lots of time in. Behavior is all about um, what people are actually doing on your website. So what we can actually see on the overview report is we've got you know, the number of page views, those key metrics we're talking about. We can see a quick snapshot of the pages people are viewing. I probably like to jump into the real, the, like the standard report, dedicated report for this, which is under site content and all pages. So this will show you all of the pages listed out for your website. So you can see like, you know, which pages are most important, you know, what in terms of page views for your site, and you can um, see other engagement, and other metrics listed out for each of these. And a really good one to use if you're looking for opportunities is the landing pages report. 
So this report shows you the first page people view as they come into your website. And so basically the, the you know, your, your top few landing pages, these are really great places to think about opportunities to cross promote the things that you're trying to offer. So whether that's something for sale or whether it's a service or whether it's trying to generate a lead or whether it's some, you know, freebie that you're giving away, making sure that you're promoting those special offers that you have and the products and services on those key landing pages, basically, basically to make sure that you're getting visibility on those and encouraging people through um, to those um, important pages on your site. So you can find them under uh, site content. There's some other reports here. We won't go through all of these, but basically it's like site speed is uh, useful if you're looking to, you know, speed up the, the loading time of your website. You can, you can explore these yourself. Site search requires setup. Basically, if you do have a search function within your website, so if you let people search inside your website, you can configure this to then see exactly what they're searching for in your website. If you don't have a search function in your website, then you don't need to worry about it. Events inside Universal Analytics are basically actions that take place within a page and this requires implementation. So in a moment, we'll jump into Google Analytics 4. We've already talked briefly about enhanced measurement in Google Analytics 4. It'll do some of this stuff uh, for us automatically. And then finally, another set of reports that is important is the conversions report. Basically, we can configure goals inside Google Analytics to measure important actions. So for example, people getting to a particular thank you page on our website or maybe even someone submitting a form or clicking a button or whatever it is that's important for you and the objective that you have for your business and your website you can configure as a goal and also e-commerce so this allows us to track the different items people are purchasing if we do sell items on our website and the other more advanced report I just want to uh, mention is multi-channel funnels down here at the bottom. The one I recommend if you are getting started with this, because it does get a bit confusing, is the top conversion paths report. I like this because it's visual. It shows you the different paths people take um, through your website. So take a look at yours, the Google Store one. Oh, so here we can see, we can start to see how our different marketing channels interact with one another. So here we can see we've got people who performed a paid search, they clicked on our Google Ads ad running, and then they came in directly before converting. So you can start to understand how your different marketing channels actually work together to drive conversions on your website. So that's our summary of key reports inside uh, Google Analytics and importantly inside a universal analytics property. And I've included lots of tips there as well along the way. So now what I wanted to do is I wanted to jump in to a Google Analytics 4 property. So in Google Analytics 4, things are a little bit different. So what we just saw with Universal Analytics is lots of different standard reports. With Google Analytics 4, there's less standard reports, but there's more opportunity to create your own custom reports and custom visualizations uh, based on the data that you've collected for your website. So basically, Google Analytics 4, we can see we have Similar to Universal Analytics, we do have this home report. Again, this is going to be sort of dynamic and custom to uh, your website, your business and organization. So we can see we've got users, we've got that trend. We can change this so we might want to look at, you know, last 28 days rather than just seven. Um, so we can start to see that trend. We can see if things are getting worse or if they're getting better. We can see, you know, in this particular case for the Google Merchandise Store, we're tracking revenue again. So we can see this sort of top snapshot. Also importantly, Google Analytics 4 has even a heavier emphasis on machine learning. So you'll see even more automated insights available in the report. So there's a definitely worth checking out. You can click just like we did in the Universal Analytics property, but you're going to have more. So you can have uh, go through, have a look at the insights. These are really great starting points. They're going to give you ideas for areas that you can optimize for your website, your marketing campaigns, all those sorts of things. So you can click on any of these to find um, more detail and uh, actually get some, some the, the data that's behind the automated insight. Okay, so that's on the home report, automated insights, definitely worth checking out. I'm just gonna close that one down. And then we also have a real-time report. It's a little bit more graphic than what we just saw in Universal Analytics. So what we can see is we've got this geographic map we can see where people are, are geographically located when they come in. And then we can also, as we scroll down, 
get these insights about people currently on their, our website, how they found us. So we can see, for example, we've got people coming in off Google search. We can then see um, if we have audiences created. We'll talk more about this in a moment. But basically, if we have if we have different audience lists, we can see the number of people who are included in our different audience lists. Importantly, then on the right, we can also see the content, the pages that they're viewing on our website. We can see all of the different things they're doing. So if they're viewing a page, if they've scrolled, if they've viewed an item, for example, a product, if we're selling products online and so on. So that's all in the real time report. The other thing that you can do in Google Analytics 4, which you can't do in uh, Universal Analytics, is you can use this view user snapshot to actually look at a few random individuals as they're are traveling through your website. So this can take a little second here to just load up. But basically what we can see is we can see a person engaging on our website and we can see the different events that have been actually tracked into our Google Analytics 4 property and we can click on them. So we can actually click on the page and we can see things like, you know, how did they find us? So we can see this one was a referral, so a link from another website. We can come down, we can look at source. So we can see how they found us. We can see the page that they're currently viewing under page location. So they're on the home page at the moment of the Google store. And then if they, if they perform another action, if they click on something, if they click to another page, we'll actually see that flow in real time into this report. And you can use these little arrows if you wanted to flick between, have a look at what someone else is doing on the website. So here, if we scroll back down, we can see they, they viewed a page, it's their first time visiting the, the site. And we can see that they're on a particular um, page, it's the you know, lifestyle product page on the Google store. So we can see all the details about them. So it gives us a sort of quick snapshot, we can just click on exit on the right if we want to uh, come out of there. So then on the left, we have, I suppose, a similar sort of setup in terms of the navigation. So on the left, we've got acquisition. So all about how people are finding our site. So let's take a look at the acquisition reports. We've got the overview report here. And this is going to, again, similar to Universal Analytics, it's all about how people are finding us. So we can see we have a trend. We can see uh, we've got some real time information on the right. And then down below this, we can see the medium. So how the message is communicated for the particular users. So it's now broken down by user and session. So for that individual versus the, the individual engagement on our website. And we can also then uh, click through to view additional details. So we can click on the different cards in the reports to then get a more granular drill down. So here I've clicked on user medium and we can now see all the different mediums. And you can also modify this report. So if I wanted to see like source and medium, which was one of my favorites from Universal Analytics, we can select that. And now we can see we've got that Google organic. So people coming in off uh, organic search, we've got some referrals um, coming in. We even on number nine here, we've got our Google ads campaigns sending traffic through to our website. So again, we can customize this. Also, I should flag just like Universal Analytics in terms of starting to, to modify things. We can, of course, change the, in this particular case, the dimension we're looking at, the information in the chart. But we can also use the date range selector. The nice thing about Google Analytics 4 is we have some more predefined options. It's sort of a little bit more similar, I suppose, to Google Ads if you are running Google Ads. So we can then select that date range we want and we can see all of our report then updates to match the date range we have selected there. So we've got acquisition reports. Engagement is a little bit like the behavior reports we saw in Universal Analytics. So this is going to show us the different pages people are viewing on our site. So here we can see the different pages. This is by a page title by default. So we can click on this one. Let's take a look. Again, it's giving us that more granular view for the different pages people are viewing. We can see here what this is actually doing is it's using the page title from our website. So what we can do is if we wanted to, we could switch this to page path, which is more along the lines of the URL on the site people are viewing. So here we can see people viewing the home page at the top, the clearance section, all the different sections on our site. So that's engagement. Under monetization, Primarily, this is going to be if you're selling items on your website. I do want to highlight with Google Analytics 4, you can uh, track apps, websites, and even both into the same reporting property. So what we can see here is because the Google Store is selling items on a website, we can come into the e-commerce purchases report to see all the different items people are purchasing. 
But if you are, for example, tracking your app into Google Analytics 4 as well, then you can see here there's an in-app purchases report which you can make use of. So it really depends on what data you're sending in to Google Analytics 4. Publisher ads is if you're monetizing content. For example, if you are placing um, ads on your content, you can then get a report on those ads, for example, through from Google AdSense. We also have the retention report, which is cohort uh, reporting that you can make use of as well. If you're getting started, I probably wouldn't begin with cohorting reports. They're a little bit more complicated. It's basically grouping people by different date ranges and time ranges as they access your website. So they're the lifecycle reports. Next, we have the user reports. So the demographic reports will provide insights. Again, as we saw in Universal Analytics, we saw the different geographic locations that people are located in as they browsed our website. So we're seeing that same one. We can click on view countries to get that more granular report just focused on the different countries people are located in as they browse our website. And then we can see all of the different metrics broken down uh, by those different countries in this particular case. And you can tweak this, modify this so we can see we could do region, city, language. We can even do age, gender, and interest as well. So it's under demographics. Technology will show us basically the different devices people are using to access our site, as well as the different platforms we're measuring. So I did say that we can measure our website as well as our mobile app. So we could measure both into our Google Alex 4 property. And if you were, you'd see this reported here. So we can see here, this is just measuring a website. So it's just saying web. But if you had an app too, you'd see your app um, reported too. Then we can see the different devices people are using as we saw in a Universal Analytics property before. Now, a couple of things that are different in terms of events. So in Google Analytics 4, an event is basically any, anything that you track into the property. Whereas in Universal Analytics, an event is simply something that happens within a page. But Google Analytics 4 has a totally different data model. I won't sort of get too focused on this primarily because I know lots of you are just starting out with Google Analytics 4. So if you are keen to learn more about events and the data model with Google Analytics 4 properties, then I've included a link in the description below this video that runs through everything that you'll need to know about events. But basically, probably the key thing to just understand is that here we can see this row here is our page views. If you click on one of the rows, so I clicked on page view, it immediately sends me through to the appropriate report in Google Analytics. So let's just come back to events and we can see we've got our page views. We've got all the other things that people are doing on our website too. So if we come in here, we'll see clicks for outbound links. We'll see, um, we can see we've got like purchase details. So people who are purchasing, so e-commerce details are sent as an event, scrolls are sent as event, everything is sent as different events through to our Google Analytics 4 property. Okay, so then the other thing I wanted to mention here is in contrast to Universal Analytics where we have lots of standard reports, Actually, in Universal Analytics, the customization options are super limited, whereas with Google Analytics 4, we have this whole analysis section, which is specifically designed to let us really explore things in the data that we've collected. So there's a whole range of different ways that you can visualize and report from Google Analytics 4. So if we actually come across the top here, we can see we've got an exploration report, which is actually a lot like the reports we've seen under lifecycle user and sort of, sort of the events ones. So if we can do that, let's click on this one and let's take a quick look to, at the exploration report. So this is where we start to build exactly what we want to see inside Google Analytics 4. So we can see here we're looking at city, but maybe we want to build a report about the different pages on our website. So what I can do is I can actually build this in the report. So if I wanted to add a dimension, which is a row of information, I can just click on the plus sign. I can then search for what I want. I want the page path, so it's right there, so I don't even need to search. And then I can click on apply. And what we'll see now that I clicked on apply is on the left-hand side, I now have that page path and I can drop that into the report. So now, instead of seeing the city, I can now see the different pages people are viewing. Then what we can do is we can modify the different metrics that we want to see. So for example, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do... We can leave it on device category, I suppose. We'll just leave it on the default, but we could add in um, something different. So maybe we'll go on to, let's do something about acquisition. So let's go source. I'm going to do a search for source. So event, we'll do 
session source last channel that will do and let's do medium and so i'm looking for session medium cross channel last click perfect okay so added those in so what we can do is we can actually add in the columns that we want to build out the report so this will add in additional detail into the report so now what i can see is i can see for the different marketing channels how people are finding our particular landing pages it's maybe a little bit too detailed as we start out so let's maybe just go back we'll just remove these off so now i can just see the number of people coming in and what we might do is we might just go event count to just see the total number of page views on this one as well so now we can see the number of pages and you can tweak this to exactly what you want to see inside your report as well. So you can continue to tweak this as, as you need. The other little tip with the Explore report is you can actually right click and you can do segmentation. And in some of the reports, you can also view the users um, that are associated with the particular element that you've clicked on. So that's the that's one of the options. So let's just go back to analysis. I just wanted to show you some of the other ones under analysis hub. And this is where you're building your own reports inside Google Analytics 4. So exploration is that sort of table view. You can then click add in drill downs to click through. You can do different funnel visualizations. So you can do a funnel analysis. So a path through your website path analysis for more details still segment overlap cohort analysis and uh, user lifetime reports. There's a whole bunch of different reports um, that are available under the analysis hub. If you'd like to see me do more videos on these reports, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below. Maybe we could make some more videos about the individual analysis hub reports that are available. Okay, so next up, I wanted to talk about audiences. Audiences inside uh, Google Analytics are really um, similar between Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4, basically an audience is a subsection of your users that you're interested in. So for example, maybe you want to um, focus in on people who viewed particular content or maybe people you know, who made a purchase or maybe people who didn't purchase. So you can create audiences um, inside your Google Analytics 4 property to meet certain criteria. So this is also useful if you are running Google ads and you're looking at potentially doing remarketing as well. You can use these audience lists inside Google ads as well as for reporting inside Google Analytics. Next is custom definitions. This is more advanced, but basically with events, you can send in your own events into Google Analytics 4. And with those events, you can include additional information. They're called parameters. And basically what you can do is you can register them so that they're available inside your reports. That's more advanced. And if you are interested in learning more about events and parameters and registering them so that they actually show up inside your reports, then again, check out the extra resources below this video for more details. The other thing that's also really good about Google Analytics 4 compared to Universal Analytics is this debug view report. So what you can actually do is you can use this to actually test uh, the tracking on your website. So you can actually use uh, Tag Assistant, uh, for example, through Google Tag Manager to actually go through your website. And we can see here that someone's gone through the website and we can actually then look at all the different events that have been sent through to Google Analytics. So this is super useful for actually understanding how things are working and making sure everything's set up correctly, um, especially if you are using Google Tag Manager to track custom events into uh, your Google Analytics 4 property. So that's our sort of summary of the reports that are available inside our Google Analytics 4. Just remember that the standard reports are limited if you're comparing it to Universal Analytics, because really the idea is that you begin to customize things using that analysis section where you actually make Google Analytics 4 your own by creating your own reports. So definitely take some time to check out that section inside uh, Google Analytics 4. So now what I wanted to do is I wanted to head back and I wanted to talk uh, more about some of the different configuration options available. So let's start with Google Analytics 4 because I suppose we were just looking at Google Analytics 4 reports. So basically inside our account, we have our Google Analytics 4 property. So we can see it says GA4 for Google Analytics 4. We then have some property settings. And this is basically very top level things like this is where we can rename the property inside Google Analytics. We can select the reporting time zone. Hopefully that's, you've set that correctly and you don't need to change that. So hopefully all of that's fine. 
There's some other details you can change, who has access to your property. Really, I suppose the important ones for Google Tag Manager are the data streams. So this is the different instances of the tag that you're using that we talked about. So if you come into data streams, you can select the data stream you created when you created your account. And what we can see is really that enhanced measurement one is the first one I wanted to highlight. These are all the things that are tracked automatically into your Google Analytics 4 property. So we can see all of these things are on by default. If there's ones that you don't want, or if there's ones um, that you don't need for whatever reason, then you can switch these off. So for example, if you didn't want to use scroll tracking, you can simply disable that option, save it, and then you're no longer automatically tracking scroll tracking on your website. So enhanced measurement is great because it just really speeds things up. We no longer have to implement all these different things manually ourselves. Importantly, we then have the tag. So for example, we can grab the details that we need to follow in order to actually add the Google Analytics 4 tag to our website. Just before we do that though, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Really the bottom one is the one I wanted to talk about most. These are the additional settings that are available in Google Analytics 4. So there's some more advanced things available. I just wanted to touch on these and then if they are appropriate for you, then you can check out the extra resources to learn even more. Basically when we send events to Google Analytics 4, we can just let them flow into our reports, but we also have the option of modifying events. So if you wanted to like tweak the naming, for example, you could actually go in, set the, set the actual current name of the event or, or the parameter and actually then set a new output uh, for that particular parameter. So you can modify things as events are flowing into your Google Analytics 4 reports. The other um, really neat thing that you can do is you actually can create new events. So for example, if you wanted to create an event for people viewing your thank you page, for example, what you can do is you can actually create a new event based on an existing event. So what we can say is in the, if the event name equals page view, for example, and the particular parameter, so like the page location contains like thank you, something like that then what we can do is we can create a new we can actually create a new event so we can actually then create a new event called you know generate lead for example so we can actually create our own events so I'd actually do this this way event name and generate lead so you can actually create your own events based on existing events in Google Analytics 4 that's not something that we can do with universal analytics I'm just going to discard and it won't save these. There's some additional options. So if you're going to be tracking people across multiple domains, so if you're going to add Google Analytics 4 across different domains, different websites that you own, then you can do that. You can um, also exclude your internal traffic and you can remove unwanted referrals from your reports as well. So that's all at the very bottom. You will need to configure these for each of your data streams, by the way. Okay, so then when it comes to Google Tag Manager, really the thing is, we need our measurement ID. So we can copy our measurement ID from the top. And I won't go through like exactly how to add Google Tag Manager to your website in this video, but if you're keen to learn more, check out the resources or let me know in the comments. And we could create another video on Google Tag Manager. So I won't go through everything in terms of setting up Google Tag Manager, because that's a whole nother topic, uh, maybe for another day. But basically, once you have that measurement ID from Google Analytics 4, what you can do is you can actually come into Google Tag Manager and you can create your Google Analytics 4 tag. So just come through, create a new tag, and then you need to look for GA4 configuration. This is gonna be the sort of default tag that runs across your entire website. And then you can add in that measurement ID. And with with Google Tag Manager, by default, we can use that all pages trigger. And this will mean that this Google Analytics 4 tag is now added to all of the pages um, on our website where we've got our Google Tag Manager code. So Google Tag Manager is great because it allows us to quickly add um, different tags to our website. So if you're in, keen to learn more about Google Tag Manager, then definitely check out the resources uh, below this video. I've got a whole Google Tag Manager tutorial series that you can uh, follow along with as well to get started. Okay, so that's how we add the Google Analytics 4 uh, measurement ID to our website. Then in terms of other settings, we can travel through. There's um, settings for filters. So for example, if you wanted to exclude your internal traffic, you can, there's some different options becoming available in terms of importing data into Google Analytics 4. So for example, if you have additional product details for the products you're selling, 
We can actually send that into Google Analytics 4 as well. So there's a whole range of different options available for us. But really the key thing to understand with Google Analytics 4 is making use of that data stream. So this is how data is actually going to be collected into your Google Analytics 4 property. Okay, so now I wanted to switch back to our Universal Analytics property because at the start of uh, this video, we did actually create two, right? We selected that option to create a Google Analytics 4 property and a Universal Analytics property. Here we can see things are a little bit different, right? So we still have our account, we have our property, a little bit different, and then we also have a view on the right. So with Universal Analytics, we have our account, we have our property, which is like our tracking code, I suppose, and then we can have different reporting views. Um, different reporting views can be used for different things. Basically, the difference is that filters are applied at the view level for uh, Universal Analytics and these permanently modified data coming into the reports. So really with Google Analytics 4, it's streamlining things so we don't have to have this extra sort of level of complexity to the structure or the hierarchy inside Google Analytics. But really, if you are using uh, Universal Analytics, the key things to really look for are at that view level. So let's click on view settings and take a quick look at some of the most important configuration options. We can select our add our name in. We can do what we saw before in Google Analytics 4, which is to add our reporting time zone. And there's um, additional option here. So site search, in Google Analytics 4, we saw that that's measured automatically. In Universal Analytics, we need to enter in the query parameter that's used to drive the search function on our website. Um, so we can see it just takes a little bit more configuration. So we can then save our settings for the particular reporting view. So we have our view settings. We then have user management, which is who has access to our different reporting views. And with uh, Universal Analytics, we need to configure our goals here. So what we actually need to do is come in for the reporting view, select goals, and then we can actually select from the predefined templates. We can click on custom, which is the one I use. And then we can name our goal, like let's say contact form. And then we can say we want it for a page, click on continue. And then we can say equals to for thank for our particular conversion page. And we can see there's just more steps involved. So then we need to name, like we need to define the funnel. So it might be our contact page. And then we can build up our particular goal configuration. So we need to configure this in this admin area for our universal analytics property. So that's just an example of configuring a goal. So then you don't need to go through and do that for all the different key objectives for your site. And we can create filters for our Universal Analytics views. There's some additional settings. So for example, e-commerce, and then if you want to enable e-commerce reporting, you can then add the steps through your checkout process as well. There's also a whole long list under the view for the different sort of assets or things that you've created inside your Universal Analytics uh, view. From there in the property column, there's some important information as well. So we've got our property settings. So these are things that we set for the property, like the property name. You can also see details about um, other, other sections that you can enable. Search console, for example, you can link through here. You can also go through other all products as well. So just gives you some more options. But probably the most important one here is the tracking info and then the tracking code. So selecting tracking info and then tracking code, this gives us our important tracking ID, which is a bit like the measurement ID that we just saw with our Google Analytics 4 property. And it also gives us our tracking code. So if you are using, for example, Google Tag Manager again, you can copy that tracking ID. And we just saw, for example, we set up our Google Analytics 4 tag inside Tag Manager. We can do the same thing with Universal Analytics. So we can just name our tag and select tag configuration and then we can select universal analytics as the tag type and then what we can do is we can create a new settings variable so there's like one more step when you're creating a universal analytics tag and then we put in the tracking id from google analytics name that too And so then once we add the all pages trigger, that means this tag will now be across all of the pages of our website. So you can immediately see, you know, Google Tag Manager, if you're, if you're not familiar with it, it just really saves time. Now we've added two tags and we're just using the one Google Tag Manager container tag on our website. So again, to learn more about Google Tag Manager, check out the resources below this video.
So that's how we can add the tag using Google Tag Manager. And um, we can see there's some additional options. So, you know, in terms of linking through to Google Ads, you can click on all products and see all the different products you can link. The other one I just wanted to shout out for was Search Console that we talked about when we looked at our Universal Analytics uh, reports as well. There's also audience definitions, which is like the audiences that we saw inside our Google Analytics 4 property. So we can build particular um, audience lists. These can be used inside Google Analytics, but they can also be used for remarketing inside Google Ads as well. And there's also custom definitions. So if you want your own custom details, this is a bit like registering parameters, I suppose, inside the Google Analytics 4 property that we saw before. And you can also import data into Universal Analytics as well. So the other thing I just wanted to mention just briefly is that with the tracking code, I know I've talked um, specifically about using Google Tag Manager, but for a lot of CMSs out there, like if you're using WordPress, for example, or Squarespace or Wix or whatever it is, you can simply take that tracking ID and paste it in and then using a plugin, for example, on WordPress, and then data will begin to be sent through to your reports as well. So that's how we can get started with Google Analytics. We've covered how we can use the Universal Analytics reports as well as the reports in Google Analytics 4. Plus we looked at some of the most important configuration options when it comes to the two different types of properties available inside Google Analytics. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like it and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.